so many, so much game chat to have. It's already, have not too disruptive. Hey guys, if you can hear us, we've got a crash on the main program, so we're going to probably have to restart it again. I'm not digging this. Nobody can hear. Yeah, exploits crash. And we are now live on Twitch, guys. Sorry about that. We tried to go to YouTube live and that did not work out for us. So, if you're going to be watching on YouTube Live, sorry. No can do. We'll get back on Facebook Live. Um, anybody else that's watching, make sure that you come and watch us on Twitch, because that's where we're going to be putting everything and watching um, to chat. If not, sorry. Sorry. Right. Um, other than that, I'm glad everybody's here. Sorry about the technical difficulties right at the beginning. Um, if you've noticed, I've got to reconfigure the camera a bit. On my co-hosts. Because we also have Dan, which is kind of outside of the picture right now. And I will fix him up in just a second. See, he's got half his face showing. Did not want to miss him. <laughs> so give me a second. Let me re reconfigure his face. Uh, there we oh. go. I'll get y'all in a little bit better. Um, stuff. Oh, I like that. Uh, our heads aren't all skinny. Oh, hush, Kathy. Yeah, I hear we're all, all big heads right here. Oh, I'm complimenting you, Gonzo. But you I know, can't I'm even see my head. Oh, not that head. Not that no, head, did... perv. All right, guys, we are Shut back you. and now live uh, on the episode. Today is episode, what, 35, we said? 35. Yep. We are on episode 35. That means 35 plus weeks of streaming, which is pretty weird for us because there was a couple of weeks we didn't stream, wasn't there, John? Correct. What weeks did we not stream? Like Christmas week and stuff. Yeah, uh, some Easter. holiday weeks and uh, it was, uh, Easter April Fools. Yep. And Adepticon. Oh, of course, Adepticon. We didn't stream at all. Sorry. Um. So. Ooh, man, that was a good burp. If you don't know, we have a new person on the podcast, and we've been talking about it. Dan is actually his studio is part of our uh, podcast. To begin with, he is one of our sponsors. Uh, we want to welcome, uh, everybody knows him as Tectonic Dan, but I, I know him as my uh, commandant, my friend, Dan the Man. Oh, you're, you're commandant? <laughs> my commandant. Confidant, not commandant. No, commandant. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is kind of strange. No one told me that. Well, you got to get with the program. I've been traveling. Hey, this, How about... And? That sounds Dan's, like an excuse. Dan's a pal of mine at conventions. Um, we've, we've shared a drink or two. <laughs> Dan stayed at my house. Well, you know. now for renting. Um, so, Dan, I was looking at your website, uh, Tectonic Craft Studio, mm -hmm. and I saw your base inserts. Yes. They were all painted up. Those look so cool. Yeah, so that's actually funny. Uh, that The way that batch happened was that I went to LVO this year, and uh, all my my painted bag of display bases got left in the absolutely do not forget pile, which every show, every show, yeah. like 30 shows a year, there's a pile of do not fucking forget these things. They're very important. And every time, it stays home. So I <laughs> sat there and, and painted bases for like one mad morning. It was like two Red Bulls and like all my paints. I'm like, let's just do this. Um <laughs> Yeah, so, and thank you, thank you. They're, uh, they're a lot of fun. I've actually got a bunch of new ones coming out. Uh, I'm actually trying to build the timeline for that this afternoon, but I, uh, I Hey, guys, cool. we are yeah, testing a I bunch like... of new things out, and if we don't have the chat, do y'all like having the chat on here more? I think it helps the YouTube viewers, so we definitely should. Okay. So, people view us after the fact. All right, just let us know, because I'll, I'll put it back on. Um, some people like it, some people don't, so we're just going to keep it and try. Um, <laughs> don't, don't worry, the Bug King. We'll, Gons will be painting later. We always start off with the face. They'll be painting afterwards. So. Yes. No need to riot. 
No writing. We got to get some other things. Oh, 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 there we go. Do y'all like the chat? I even made it really big and bright so everybody can see it now, too. Yes. Whoa. Yes. yes. Uh, we're doing a lot of tweaking with, with the, uh, the stream and stuff, so just kind of <laughs> go with it. <laughs> um, so before we get started, we got to do our old tradition. Uh, Kathy, what are you drinking tonight? I'm uh, I'm still working on my bottle of uh, Kraken and more mm. of the uh, Coke Zero sugar. So yeah, that's what I'm drinking. That and coffee, of course. Of course, like coffee. Pinky Dan, good call on the pinky. Classy. <laughs> uh, Someone's <laughs> Dan. What are you drinking tonight? I am drinking uh, various little bits of whiskey and or vodka with. Uh, Arizona Mucho Mango, which is the best $1 mixer you can possibly find anywhere. Um, and they actually have a poll on what to mix it with later on. So I have some truly terrifying choices to make. But <laughs> in the meanwhile, until I get there, I'm drinking this, and it's nice. Okay. John? <clears throat> well, I'm going to start off with some uh, of this uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's uh, uh, Apple Pie Oh uh, yes, whiskey uh, mixed with Fireball whiskey is one of the recipes on their website. Oh. And then I'll follow that up with uh, uh, Fireball whiskey mixed with uh, Dr Pepper, because that's great. Huh. Hmm. And then ice cream. Maybe ice cream later. If, I, if it gets that bad, I'm gonna go to the to the straight, you know, this and shots. But I'm gonna sip it because I don't want to get fucked up. I kind of have to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What else? Uh, Gonzo, what are you uh, drinking? Um, I'm taking up my last few vanilla porters from BB. Um, I've only got like two left. I've been drinking these quite a bit on the podcast and when I'm streaming. So this is what I'm going to go with. Uh, so with that, everybody's got their drink. John, do we need to make a cheer to anyone in particular? Nothing bad happened this week, right? No, but you know, I'll give a shout out to uh, one of our former listeners, um, Trollton Heston from the old Mount John days. He, his wife uh, just gave birth. Ah. First poop. First poop. Hashtag first, hashtag first poop. poop. <laughs> so for everybody there, make sure you uh, try to find out and hashtag first poop. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Me, good night. Oh. All right, so let's switch over to the painting cam because, um, Dan, I'm going to show you what I worked on this week. I All had right, to tweak me. this real quick. So sure. give me a second. Okay. Are they Tectonic Craft Studio bases? Yes. Also, I put on a shirt, by the way. Ta-da! Ta-da! Uh -huh. <laughs> There's some serious product placement going on there, Dan. That's right. It's my shirt over my wood. <laughs> I mean... So, yeah, I was saying, uh, uh, mm. before the toast, I was saying, I like the uh, the variety of bases you have, like, you have the brick, you have the cobblestone, you have the flagstone, you've got some sci-fi options, and, and I yeah. thought they looked really, really cool. So there's some great uh, scope for all different types of paint schemes, and it looks like they'll be going with all different sorts of models. Yeah, a couple of those things are super, super versatile. Um, I know that the Shatterscape and the Broken Ground are two that you can use for a lot of, especially like some really fantastical um, war zone stuff. So you can do like the Shatterscape. I've seen people do ice, um, molten lava. Actually, molten is probably the most popular one. Cause people, everyone wants to fight in volcanoes because yeah. they just have to. <laughs> um, I like you. sandstone, um, mesa, anything really. It's really great. And a lot of those same things cross over for uh, the broken ground. I also made some really cool Skaven bases. So I made all the cracks like Paint the whole thing white, and then just put some neon green wash in there from Secret Weapon, and then uh, dry brush the outsides with gray. And it's like, wow. Oh, sure. It's like four-minute base, three-minute base. I don't know. And it was just one for display. You know, It wouldn't be too hard to do more at once. But anyway, thank you for looking. It's uh, it's great. I actually have a lot of fun with those because that's a nice little project to you know, a couple hours to make something cool. Um and as I'm actually, one of the things I'm going to be working on tonight is my Star Wars Legion stuff, which I'm making, absolutely making base toppers for. I was yeah. going to ask you if you uh -huh. were stuff for Legion. Oh, God, I am. I've been, I was born and raised on Star Wars, so. I wish you had before I did all this. 
<laughs> yeah, you can still add that. his lead, his stuff to your collection. Sorry, that's it's super. A, that's that's a uh, tiny collection. I'm wait. Even. I'm waiting for him to do terrain. We did some cool terrain pieces. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Oh yeah, so the terrain stuff I'm doing for for Legion is gonna be really cool. Um, it's been really rough. So it went from so Legion got released at Adepticon, and then I went Adepticon on the road or home for weekend. Pax home for weekend. Kingdom Con. Uh, recovered this weekend, so like, uh, and before that, I was prepping for my Adepticon releases, so I didn't really have a chance to work on it. But I've got a really cool idea for how to work um, Legion terrain, um, because something I'm realizing as I'm getting more and more games and more and more models and more and more terrain is that my apartment is fucking tiny. Um, I mean, granted, I store a lot of this at home or at work, uh, but when I do bring stuff home, like, oh, here's this giant box of this box is bigger than my table. Uh, okay, and so I've been starting to think about things in terms of how are people going to use this stuff at home and how are they going to keep this at home. And the so Star Wars stuff I'm doing, I'm starting with a Core Technica set, which mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, uh, pylons and sensor arrays and, you know, crates and walls and cisterns and weird boxes with diagonal lines because Star Wars. Um, awesome. No, but you think about it, those things are everywhere. Those things are Death Star. On Tatooine, they're on Hoth, they're Endor, because that budget was small <laughs> initially. Um, and so basically, the idea is to have uh, a co the uh, core te tectonic, or pardon, um, technical elements that kind of have to go into terraforming a world or occupying a world, and then make smaller sets to kind of adapt and build on that. So that way, you're only hobbying once. And like getting a lot of mileage out of your out of your hobby hours instead of making a whole new winter set and a whole new forest set and a whole new, you know, because I'm breaking it down, and it's actually an idea I got from Shadespire, um, because they kind of sell hobby projects. Each warband is, you know, between two and ten hours of work, twenty if you want to go the extra mile. But that's it. It's only a couple of models. I think there's some customer satisfaction being sold in. In, in those projects, which is nice. All right. I drink some more. <laughs> well, yeah. I think the good thing about Legion is it seems like it's going to use a lot of the same terrain style as Infinity, so you're getting double. Because mm -hmm. you can sort of have that techie look and, and back and forth. And if you can double down on the people who are looking for it, or the people who play both games. John, <laughs> John you play so much, man. I thought I had a lot of models. And then you're like, here's this game, and this game, and this game. I'm impressed. You, sir, are like a true hobbyist. It's I, amazing. I, I'm in I, awe. I still have uh, Relic Knights 2 coming, too. <laughs> Stoked. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Uh, that sort of came in, and now there's so many games came out since. I'm like, I don't... I mean, like, I started playing 40K between when that was kickstarted and now, so... Right. Um, we'll find something out. <laughs> I'll make it work. Good. Yeah, well, I found that I started framing projects. So, like, one thing is when I go to shows, um, you know, I don't, like, I mentioned the pre-ramble. I don't have a ton of time to, to model. I don't have a ton of time to play. So instead of thinking of things in what games do I want, you know, what am I going to play? Because, honestly, not all of them. But if I think of it more in terms of what games do I want to support. Who do I want to, who do I see doing good work for the community, good work for players, like, you know, taking care of, game stores, hobby hobby shops, cons, and really, like, pushing, you know, what tabletop gaming is. And I, I give them some money. And if I get to build, build this stuff, great. If I get to play, even better. But, um, you know, just so I don't feel... So for a while, I was, like, buying stuff and feeling guilt or just, like, bad for not playing it. I'm like, you know what? This is good stuff. I'm glad I bought this game. But there's so many games out right now. You're totally right. <laughs> It is every time like oh look this new game like uh, we had a couple weeks ago the, the the announcement of the Battlestar Galactica fighter combat game, and while that's something I should be excited for it get a resounding map because I'm like, but X Wing already exists and I own X Wing why am I going to get a similar game because I don't have time to play X Wing. Right, right. Even yeah, I don't know. Wait, so it's well that's why it goes back to like which which of these companies are focusing on community. Because a lot of the stuff that we want to do is play games with our friends. 
Pardon me. Oof. Bad whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking oh, of bad whiskey, uh, segue. So, so, the first whiskey I was drinking is gone, and I'm not going to say which one it was. So I have... Uh, I want to actually ask the listeners to, to vote which one of these... It's not going to be a shot. I'm going to mix this with my juice. I have some Bacardi 151, Ooh, and yes. I have some Old Pro. <laughs> and uh, I have only have a little bit of uh, Heroes Vodka, which is actually pretty awesome. But I am I'm, I'm going to finish it in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> so the last drink of the night, I'll leave in the hands of the the comment section. Mm. 151 and Mango Juice, or Old Crow and Mango Juice, and there's there's some country guys out there going old crow and mango juice. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Shadow of the paradigm. Uh, old crow and anything is. Uh, it was a, it was a gift, right? Well, I mean, I had some old time whiskey. I don't know if you've ever had that, uh, and it was. I should have been warm when it came with the plastic jug. Yep, that's typically a. We we end up using it to uh to weather the roommate's uh, uh wooden uh mug. <laughs> That she uses oh. for alcohol. <laughs> we used it mostly for that, and then I ended up mis- mixing the last of it with, like, what's going to kill the taste of whiskey in this? I just want alcoholic. <laughs> well, what's the answer? Uh, Dr. Pepper. Yeah, Dr. Pepper. To, to be fair, Dr. Pepper is usually the answer. <laughs> yeah. Or, That's um... ginger ale and Sprite, the best soda mixers you can have. You don't need the rest. I haven't had a lot of luck with Sprite, honestly. Like, Sprite oh. does well. Sprite doesn't have a lot, so Sprite's very versatile mm-hmm. and very accepting and a solid base, but Sprite does not have a lot of strength and recovery. Not that I have a ton of experience in this or anything, <laughs> but if you have some, like, real shitty, like, shoe shine liquor, you put that in Sprite, you're going to taste bubbly that. So that's, Thanks. like, going to be that same bad booze in your mouth, also your nose. Yes. Do you like uh, <laughs> apple? Do you like apple flavor? I do. So Jim Bean makes apple whiskey. Yes, I know. With Sprite. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So this right here, Sprite's not going to fucking help me with Old Crow. Well, no, you don't You don't pour a straight brown whiskey like that into Sprite. Oh, that's, this, is apparently, this is apparently Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is like an $11 bottle of bourbon, so this is... <laughs> that's the best. Actually, it's funny. I find the only thing I buy off the bottom shelf is uh, actually vodka. Because I'm just mixing that shit anyways. It's right. going right, it's going right sure. in orange juice or something. Like, I don't care. Fucking, right. uh, Add to any other, like, turn-based board game or minis game you're playing. And it's drinking rules. And so, <laughs> playing Seven Wonders. Want to get trashed? Boom. Suddenly drunk. It was like, I hit for like $12, $15 on Amazon, which is pretty good. This and, is uh, for, that's for people with shame. Oh my because God. they're like, I don't want to just get drunk. Where I come from, you just get drunk. You want to get drunk during a game? Just fucking drink some alcohol. Then we have a good time. So the thing where this comes in you is... You suck all the okay. joy out of things, John. Sorry? We are so back, like... guys. Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, be... uh, XWIT seems to be causing a lot of problems with crashing, so we're just going to take it straight from Twitch and just screw everything. I locked a little bunch of stuff out. Hopefully, we'll keep going. Um, and I got our camera back so people could see what we were working on. Sorry. Uh, Dan was talking about a new game he picked up. You can play with any other game, which is what, Dan? Suddenly Drunk. Suddenly Drunk. Yeah, it's from uh, <gasps> Games, the same folks that, uh, I don't know if they partnered with Cards Against Humanity or the same makers, but so what Suddenly Drunk is, it is a card game that you add to any other game you're playing for drinking rules. Um, and there's like, so there's instants and any times and conditionals and stuff like that and just you know john was saying oh if you want to get drunk when you're playing games just get drunk i was so not going to say that again I was, <laughs> what i was not going to say that again i wasn't going to run into your parade the second time i'm sorry it's okay no, no. so but this is for when i, when I want to get my friends drunk i'm like oh you want to get that drunk john too fucking bad old crow's coming for you we're doing this <laughs> i see um, <laughs> Oh, I want to do this with zombie dice. Why yeah. would you play Suddenly Drunk with Cards Against Humanity? Oh my god, that sounds... There's a video on their website of watching it played Suddenly Cr- Drunk Cards Against Humanity 
that seems aren't like you that already w- drunk when you're playing Cards Against Humanity, usually? No, no. man, we play it stone cold sober. Cards Against Humanity is serious business for us. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with your friends, John. Only if you want to laugh your ass off a lot. <laughs> I mean, no. I, I hate The first I hate time to someone laugh. drops Auschwitz, and I just, I just look at him straight face and go, too soon. <laughs> Damn it, John. It is. It is too soon. We have a good time with Cards Against Humanity. We, uh, oh, it's great. So, yeah, what have anyways. you played this with, uh, Dan? What games have you played this with at all? Any yet? I haven't played it yet. So, we got this at PAX East. Um, the weekend after that, I recovered, and then I was at Kingdom Con, and that show is so booze heavy already. <laughs> it's that room. You don't, like, don't want to die. I mean, I do want to die, but not now. Like I mean, some uh, sorry, good like die. someday. I want to live forever. I want to like get old and then move on. Um, sorry, I was like one step too dark. Yeah, um, so dark. suddenly drunk. <laughs> yeah, suddenly drunk. Uh, I, Tilder is. I have not gotten a chance to play it yet. Um, but I think it would be good for um, a bunch of the social deduction games. So like Secret Hitler or Avalon or Werewolf. It would be a great time. Like, oh, yeah? Screw you, John. Drink. Yeah, maybe if I were drunk playing werewolf, I might win once or twice. See? No, because they'll always vote you out. You know that. I know. You're you know right. what I'm really oh. good at drunk? There's one game I'm amazing at drunk. Risk? It's basketball. Basketball? <laughs> <laughs> we did one guy's birthday party, and, and it was like the first time I really got uh, got drunk. And they're like, John, what are you doing? I'm like, half court hook shots and shit. They're like, you can't play basketball. Like, I'm drunk. Apparently, I can. Suck it. Uh-huh. Um, Dan, I oh actually God, have some of your product, product here that we wanted to talk about. Um, and what somebody had you? asked about this what? specifically. Uh, sure. Show me your what show me wood. Um, somebody had asked yeah, about this wall that you did. Mm-hmm. Um, I went and painted it up. Really quick and easy. No big deal. Um, yeah. And whenever I told them it was like seven pieces... They kind of freaked out for a second, and then I was like, uh, like what? You just glue them yeah. together. I know, I was, uh, th- they, they thought hard. it was, no. And, and then, I should have probably done a video on putting it together, it's because it's not difficult. this is okay. actually pretty easy to put together. You yeah, got yeah. this bottom piece, yeah, and then they, if you see these two little pegs, and then you just stack the bricks on it however you want. And it's not a brick, it slats a brick, like this is one piece, and this is one piece. This is one uh-huh. piece, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And you just put it on That's there. what I was thinking when I saw it. It's just a bunch of layers, and you glue them together. Yep. And they dry brush really nice, too. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I I painted it dark gray first, uh, washed it down, and then dry brushed it. And then, of course, I added a little bit of grass for, you know, look. Yeah. Gravel. So, yep. Looks good. And it looks like guys could stand on it. Oh, on yeah. On top of it. Like, look, you can put a so that's stormtrooper cool. on it if you wanted to. If you wanted to not make cover. So, uh, this is one of the walls we'll be giving away. Also, this was actually really fun to paint and put together. Uh, this is one of your dials. Yes. Which oh, I thought was so interesting good. that these were two pieces. I didn't mm-hmm. know that whenever whenever I saw them. Whenever, you know, you look at them at uh, the thing. But uh, they're two dials. These two, you glued together. Um, and yep. then I just dry brushed it. And then, of course, added a little bit of detail to it. And then... Dry brush this and added some stuff to it too. Did you go with like metal and brass? Yes, went with the metal and brass look to it. So good. Yeah, nice. so I got both of those. That's definitely one we'll be we'll be giving away both of these to one person tonight. And those didn't take long at all. Um, yes. I did. Stop. I did have a question uh, for you because somebody had asked, sure. and I don't know much about laser cutting and MDF stuff. They were like, "Did you prime it first? And I went, "Yeah, I primed it because that's what I'm used to." Do you find mm-hmm. that some people don't primer your stuff and just paint straight on it? Uh, uh, hmm. So you don't. Have, sometimes people don't. Uh, one of some of the people is me. I don't always, you know, prime. Uh, so stuff that I use is the same stuff they make IKEA out of. So it's semi sealed. Um, so it actually, like, paints pretty well. If I'm doing something big, I'll prime for sure because I just don't want to spend forty minutes painting. Like 150 cube square inches of brown, uh-huh. yeah, or gray, whatever. Um, 
or if I'm doing something I'm going to do a lot of blending on, because actually I paint, uh, similar to Jim, actually, Jim, and I, I found that I painted in a similar style as Jim Waffle, and then, uh, you know, and then I learned a little bit more from his video and stuff. And so I do a lot of layers of watered down colors. So if I'm doing that, I'll definitely prime it first because, you know, it's semi steel, but it's still made of compressed wood. So it'll start, you know, like floofing out eventually. Um, but yeah, go ahead and prime. It's fine. Like, that's the way to do it. Okay. Um, I didn't even try not, like, just like you, when I first started doing this, I was like, oh, yeah, here's my regular ass box of hobby tools, and here's my game workshop primer. So, you know, I didn't even try other stuff until later. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, I got to thank Xander, of course, our super fan Xander, for giving me the idea, because I was working on your um, base inserts, because you gave me the wooden, you know, wooden uh, planks. Yep. And, I, you know, I thought about just doing, hey, let's just do them wood and stuff. And Xander's like, why don't you do them like that gray washed out wood look? Yes. And I was like, that would be really good. And then Xander's like, you know what? That would be really good for Company of Iron because you don't need a lot of bases for Company of Iron. You know, you have, what, five mm -hmm. to ten models. And so right. I did them. Um, nice. And right now, uh, I still got, like I said, still doing the water effects. Got to clean up the effects. And I'm going to add some static grass to it. And some water effects. I'm going to splash some water up on the sides and then do a drill, little dry brush of white on them uh, and stuff. But I think these turned out really well. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to be these great. These went really, really good. Uh, I really like this. If I if I was going to play a pirate themed for com like Company of Iron, I would definitely grab a bunch of these for it and put these on there. And I would paint them the exact same way. And it took like no time whatsoever. I did a, you know, a coat of... What, okay. I take that back. I would change something than what I did here. Um, I scarred them up after I painted them, uh, but it didn't stay as good of a texture as I wanted it to because every time I washed it, of course, it soaked in. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what I think I'm going to do next time is I'm going to uh, – I'm going to get some. Cause I'm going to do a, a pirate-type thing. I'm, I'm going to rough them up first because what I did is I took the – uh, where is it? Where's my hobby knife? The grip part of this area of my hobby uh -huh. knife, and I scraped it across. Oh. And so I scraped it across, so it gave it like a grainy texture. Sure. And then I'll prime it, and then when I wash it, that wash won't soak into the grain as much. Right. It'll sit yeah, more on top. Say. I wonder if you could do the same thing with a coarse grit sandpaper. You probably could. Um, Answer, you don't want to do it. You don't want a smooth one because you're just getting a smooth surface. You want it to like, gouge into it and kind of give it that darker, because when it's washed, it's got a real dark, dark uh, lines through it. And right. They, they sh I think they would show up better if I, you know, roughed them up first, then right. primed them. That way, it would seal them a bit more, and then did the right. wash over it. Or you could just seal it after you get there. Just do a, do a matte varnish over that layer, and then come back Correct. and wash afterwards. Yeah, some of that because that, that was just something I just learned. Because I mean, there was some really cool pattern, really cool pattern that came up whenever I was working on it. Um, yeah. That I was like, ooh, I really like this. I mean, it still they still look awesome, but I was like, that was to be something different I would do just from a learning aspect. Because I I've never worked with your stuff before. Never even I don't usually do base inserts. I make my own. But I think uh -huh. doing this, especially for a pirate theme company of iron yeah and if you have Hell a lot yeah. of guys that you're yeah. basing i know there's a lot of people that don't want to spend the time making their own bases for a whole army and this is a fast way to do it and uh tectonic craft studios dot com has a whole Back bunch down. of uh base inserts of all kinds of different varieties that would go with fantasy sci-fi or historical miniatures I know that your uh, your sci-fi one was pretty popular when Convergence came out because I know a lot of people that bought those for your com for Convergence, the yeah, circled got... ones. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've got a couple different ones. Kelly actually made those. Um, uh, for those of you who met Kelly, she's wonderful and amazing, and uh, she likes math way more than I do. She's, she's, <laughs> she's like, you can make pretty pictures of math. Check it out. I'm like, yes, those are amazing. I'm skeptical on the math part, but. I believe you. <laughs> I believe in results. So yeah, so she made some really cool stuff there. Um, oh, about the uh, sandpaper. If you sand those that too much, you're gonna degrade the 
compression part of it, and I'll start getting actually kind of fuzz. So if I was going to make uh, a wood grain, I'd actually go through uh, with a sharp a hobby knife and kind of drag it along the ways that you want, and then sand the dust off. So otherwise, if you just sand it, you're going to end up breaking that semi seal, and then you're just going to have like fuzzy wood dust and yes. or sawdust instead of that sweet pattern. So I'm not. Now, would one of these sculpting tools, it's like a scribing tool where you drag, it's like the hooked one where you drag it down. Would that work mm -hmm. too to just get that line? Uh, that might, I think that would make, still make more of the fuzz. Um, MDF is pretty awesome, but it is also uh, pretty fickle. Um, it does respond super, super well to being uh, cut with a sharp knife. So you can. Actually, like if you start trimming the edges, I make really cool stone, like layered stacking stuff like that. Um, or you can, I'm, if you do like basically one cut like this and another cut like this, you can make some really nice um, grooves or bas reliefs or runes or whatever else. Um, that does take a bit more time because you're writing words that are 30th inch tall, but, or I don't know, math. Again, math. Uh, math. Math. Was it, is, is it the metric math or, you know, English? I went to school for lines, so it's all kind of an F <laughs> of me. Um, now, you did, we did show off a few pictures, was it last week or week before, of your new dungeon terrain stuff that you got coming out. Yes. When was that coming out? Ago. Was it two weeks ago? I can't remember. Uh, let me work on some Legion models. I am trying a new paint scheme, so don't kill me. Because I also want to talk to you about your Legion terrain, too, so this would be a sick one. Cool. Uh, Legion Terrain is this week actually for the drawing drawing docket. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. already I'm already a month and a half behind. Um, so a lot of folks I've said I've met are like waiting to find the right stuff. So, um, where should I start? What do you want? Let's talk. No, let's man, talk your dungeon stuff. Oh, the dungeon stuff. Um, dungeon stuff is. I don't know. It's, uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and then uh, PAX East was coming up, and I figured this is going to be the time to pull a trigger on it. Let's just, uh, let's, just do, let's just push it. And so I spent a couple... Geez, it was a kind of a blur of five days, but I worked out you know, how to make these things um, interchangeable and how to make these things sturdy and how to make them compatible and how to make them able to look unique. Um, and also to be able to something that people can use in a, a variety of different ways. So I've got some stuff. Uh, it's actually over, over there. I stole my display set to Pagani at Kingdom Con because uh, he's just like, Dan, I want that. I was like, I'm flying home. Sure. <laughs> um, that flying home thing. Mm. And then the show, people are like, so you want to bring it home? And usually I'm like, I'm driving. I don't care. Uh, flying home suddenly, that, that changes the whole story. <laughs> Especially just the models that take up, you know, cubic feet of your of your luggage versus you know, product or new toys. God, I had so many new toys. Those new elves. Anyways. Um <laughs> Hashtag elves. I'm gonna pop away for a hot second. Someone should drink. Oh, also my drink. Has there been any votes for the which poison I should drink? Uh, uh, a lot of people said I, both. I, no, both <laughs> or uh, we had... wait simultaneously in the same cup. Yes, let's do that, Dan. You no, don't need to I... do anything today or tomorrow. <laughs> Should we or ever? I do. All those things are wrong. I'm doing stuff after the show. You're not doing uh, anything. No, I like the idea of the rum and the uh, mango. That sounded yummy. So the only actual uh, vote was from Louisville Pitch 305, who said the 151. Everyone else said both. I, I agree with the Louisville pitch, uh, the 151 and the mango, because that sounds actually kind of delicious. God, I fucking hate 151. I should have done this. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the internet. If you let them choose, they will find, unknowingly, the worst possible combination for you and choose it. Bodie McBoaterface. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some stuff. Okay. Hashtag Bodie McBoaterface. Um, guys, right. let's go ahead and do one of our giveaways while Dan's running away. We will give away, let's see, what do we want to give away first? What, the wall? 
Yeah, wall. Let's give away the wall. I'm going to test out some new giveaway stuff we've been doing on here. Because oh, I've been working on stuff. That way we don't have to do numbers and rolling and crunching. And all that good hunky-dory thing. Uh, like I said, guys, if you want to be a winner on this, you definitely have to um, be follow. a follow. You do not have to subscribe. If you do subscribe, that's even awesomer. But just something Double we want to give away. Double extra awesome. Yep. Um, better. Or no, better. awesomer. Both. It can be both. So we're going to try it's some of this math. stuff out. You can do both. You can do, you can do both. Also, yes. if you're uh, new, and I see that Senior Vale has followed about an hour ago. Yeah, he's awesome. not watching anymore. Man. All right. He's... He's probably missing his family. He's in the military. He's currently not with his family. They're going to oh, be joining gotcha. him again next week. And then they're going to Italy. He's he's a buddy of mine. So. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Him and his wife and his relatively newborn, I think a year old son. So. Okay. That'll be interesting. Well, I thought I had the... Hashtag first poop. Hashtag first poop. He's oh. the one who warned him about the first poop. Oh, my crew is crazy. <laughs> Dan heard that from over there. Dan, uh, Necron so. Miles is here. Yay! Just make sure, guys. Like I said, make sure that you are um, a follower. So let's go ahead and give out. We're active users. We're gonna roll it out. See who gets it. Um, oh, Cinderella's back and a ten-month-old son. That's reasonably close to a year, sir. <laughs> That's awfully close. So let's see. Yeah. We're gonna try this new giveaway app. If I did the math. And see if it works. Ready? Oh, I've done roll the it. math. It's really close. Well. C oh. Cinder <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> uh, Cinderella, you get the wall. I need you to send me your information. Um, and send me your uh, physical address, and I will be sending this wall to you. Um, you need to give me your email address if you're not sure it's going to get there in time. Yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, wherever you want to send it, since uh, they did say you are <laughs> L luckily, APOs count as... Uh, oh, listen to that. So I can tell you. What's up? We just got a new follower. Um, and yeah, we're playing with a lot of new stuff Yay. today, guys. Got what a new follower. Oh, cool. Thank you, Ooh. Louisville. We appreciate it. Make sure everybody everybody on here, please type in one little thing so everything shows up properly. Give me a hashtag first poop, everybody. <laughs> you can just give that away. Gonzo. I, I kind of like that a lot. Hashtag first poop. That way you can be eligible for the prize. Everybody needs to type that in at least once. Hashtag first poop. Are you implying? <laughs> what are you saying about my giveaways here, Gonzo? No, no. That, we're, that's just going to be our. That's going to be our new thing. Is it's, hashtag first it's poop. It's babies. It's cute. Yeah, we're talking about babies. Come on, man. That, that's 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 good. It's awesome. Babies are cute. Ah, ha, ha, force Earl change. change. <laughs> I remember my first oil change. Oh, I remember my first oil change. That was my 1978 Mustang too. No, 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 <laughs> wrong one. Oh, I don't know what oil change you're talking about, then, Gonzo. Yeah, mine out of the Yeah, I don't know. I mean, dude, my we dipstick move. didn't go anywhere except in that Mustang too. Wait, wait, Xander Warlord. Do you mean given or received? You know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Send me. I'll make sure you send me an say... address so I can send this to you. All right, man. <laughs> um, do we want to get back on the topic? Or Let's get back on the topic and not about peeing and pooping anymore. Um, <laughs> adults, um, bodily fluids. Bodily fluids. Uh, okay. Bodily uh, fluids are hilarious. <laughs> Until you're the one that gets peed on in the face, I think. I don't really know. I haven't been peed on in the face. Let's get on the topic before I get anyone. Uh, Dan, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about your dungeon terrain still, uh, because Ooh. people had some questions about it already. Uh, what they were talking about the um, furniture and stuff that you had in there, uh, the little bitty other things with it. Are you just doing the walls and the floor and the sides? So the furniture and stuff. And there is all Pathfinder deep cuts. Well, there's if it was unpainted white resin or plastic, then it was uh, Pathfinder uh, deep or WizKids Pathfinder deep cuts dungeon terrain. It's amazing. It's so good. It's like it's five dollars per little pack, and they have bigger sets of twenty five, and it's just super good. Uh, it's pretty. It like 
totally sinks your reality into this into this game. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, the models are all Reaper Bones because that Kickstarter happened. Um, and it's just such a huge array of, of minis. Um, and then anything that is painted or wood was all mine. Okay. So there's the most recent set of pictures from Kingdom Con. I started putting some of my dungeon stuff, my standard terrain, so like the altar, the dais, um, some of the chaos stuff. So anything that looked like wood or was painted was, you know, original products of mine. Okay. Are you going to be selling them in like in a pack, like corridor six by whatever is so much? And how, how do you plan on packaging that? So I actually one of the things that I as like item number two is like work on the, the marketing stuff. So I was just selling it as like bunches of walls and bases. And I was like, you know, I don't want people to have to like, you know, nitpick what walls they want to do. So basically what it's going to be, what it's going to be is by usually two packs of hallways or you know basically an x by x room or y by y room because it's not triple x mm-hmm. so like a four by four room or two by four room or a three by six room uh and those those all come uh like this this is a, a two by two room looks much like a hallway uh-huh or you can you know and so what's nice about this is that you can just keep it like this and Instead of having a dry erase board, just be like, here's my nice, like, switches around. And I didn't bother with fasteners because this isn't like a, a war game. There's no game state that needs to be monitored at all times. There's a grid. Um, and it's going to work out better aesthetically to have everything just be there and work. Um, as long as you put, like, a neoprene mat underneath or something that has a tiny bit of grip itself, you'd be great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, or here's, here's a 4x4. Four and so I've got a couple different variants. This one's clean, but like I've got other variants that had nice packing patterns in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, For that ambiance. Right, because like these things are probably old or lame. Um, and so right now I've only I only have finished because I you know I wanted to work out all the math and stuff, and then you know cons happened. I've got a, a two by four, a four by four, and a three by six, but Tomorrow's projects is a three by th- three by three room, six by six room, uh, six by four, um, and so that's the, the basis of it. And after that, I have uh, wall packs, and so I'm gonna actually be building these while we're talking. Uh, and they're basically mirrored panels, and they pop out. You know, they've only got a few points of contact. They pop out like this. So I have a question. I've got an answer. Uh, you're. You're like, if I had four six by six rooms, could I put them together to make one really big room? Do they work that way? Sure. There's, yeah, there's a little bit of. Um, there would still be a, uh, you know, the they'll have a, a quarter inch rim around them. Okay. So you might just like overlook that in your, you know, in your yeah. Cartesian elements. Sure. Like I would just. Right. Besides that, yeah, that's actually something that gets played up a bunch when I was playing with the sets uh, at, on the table, because you can have a four by four room and then have, you know, put walls around three parts of it and then have one hallway go off this way, another go off this way, or you know, go towards. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. And so here's, actually, where's the wood glue? There's the vodka. There's... <laughs> that's always the question. Where's that wood glue? Make sure you use the wood glue on the wood and drink the vodka, vodka? not vice versa. That would be bad. Vodka is is gone, so we're in 151 territory now, you assholes. (laughs) (laughs) I I guess I did this, so... Uh, That's right, I'm down to the uh, intense apple pie. (laughs) I did. Um, And so I'm using wood glue, um, adding these two pieces together. They're mirrored pieces, and the important part about these is that they have these uh, these two sets of tabs. So like the back tabs and the inside tabs, and these lines fit with into the slots. Tabs fit into the slots. You guys have built kits before, I see. Hooray! What? Huzzah! Yeah, and so actually, while the glue is setting, I'm gonna actually take one of these and stick it right in there. Phrasing, um, so that it lines up right. You know, and the point of this is that I'm not building a one-time you know room to be built and forever there. I want to be able to take this thing apart because 
the most glorious part of these is that they can be collapsed and put into a shoebox. Um, I put almost a whole dungeon. I get my sent to guy is my stuff. I put almost a whole dungeon in one of those white privateer boxes the size of a, a heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all we were able to put six four by fours, eight hallways, and all the walls in one of those boxes. And that is like, if you ever played D and D, you're not getting through more than three rooms in a night, pretty much ever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, if you guys have more friends with better attention spans, but yeah, no, mine absolutely not. Oh, lucky okay. we can get through. I sit next to the guy who's all, you know, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because he's one of those old school uh, tournament D&D players. And I didn't know that tournament D&D was a thing oh, until yeah. I met him. You know, with I the, really don't think it is still. With all the people, right? Ding. All the people playing the same adventure, you know, and, and it's timed and oh. all of that stuff. And I'm like. I, I've played games like that at cons, but I don't try and be competitive. I just have a great time. No, no, that's it's, competitive D and D. No, to tell you, the oh guy God. next to me is like my dad's age, and he's been playing D and D since before it was invented. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but he's a stare. I don't think the math checks out on that. He's. Yeah, I'm, he's, I'm with John here. He's so <laughs> funny. No, but you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, the the old grognards are usually a hoot, but uh, <laughs> they don't have time for all this role playing shit. There are dungeons to crawl through and monsters <laughs> to kill and treasure to take. Um, and I'm always like, what's your hurry? Dungeons. Uh, loot. The loot. loot. No, but I like the way that he sows chaos. This is totally off topic, but I love the way that he sows oh, yeah. chaos into an adventure. Uh, yes. Off topic on this very serious, very H-Core uh, podcast we're running here. What? <laughs> what hashtag, hashtag first poops. Hashtag hey, first poop. Hey, this is the uh, this is the Tectonic Dan Tectonic Craft Studios dot com. Uh, this is the episode for Dan stuff. Yeah, you just broke out cool uh, cool dungeon terrain that I'm sure is gonna be priced much better than Dwarven Forge. I have one set of that, and it is absolutely a balls. But I didn't purchase it because I've seen the price of that stuff. A buddy gave it to me because he was going overseas and like I'm not taking this with me. I'm like. This is awesome, but I would never buy more because yeah, yeah. some I, of us have a budget. Yeah, <laughs> my space. budget looks at that and goes, and it's what? tiny. Oh yeah, well the space is not too bad. You can store it reasonably well. Your stuff will store way better. Don't. Yeah, it's also flat, heavy. The pitch is well. This stuff isn't light. I mean, I guess it's it's not it's definitely heavy, heavy, but it's compared to that stuff. I mean, it's yeah, it's resin. basically I think what people wanted when that stuff came out. I mean, it's just you got to do a little work yourself. Yeah. Um, this is also like, people bring this up when people talk about like oh secret weapon stuff. I'm like, I love and use secret weapon bases. Um, but like that's where my monsters go. Or I'll, like I'll use those bases with my stuff. Like it's really wonderful. And resin is a very versatile versatile tool. Just uh, you know, there's no need to like be puritanical in your using you hobby stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's good lord, man. Just use what works. It doesn't matter if you know if you're mixing, you know, all my small bases are, you know, tectonic dan because it's easier to get a bunch of them, and then my bigger bases are someone else because it just works together well. Who cares? I mean, if it works together, it works together. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and same for Dorvin Forge. I mean, I, I'm an artist by, I'm an artist, so I really can't ever afford that unless someone wants to trade for it. But um, I would absolutely encourage people to use that stuff for like their big boss scene or like the entryway to the hidden temple or whatever else. And I like, used it just once and it was amaze balls, but man, amazing, visually yeah. stunning. But then every time you drop a non-painted mini in that, you're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just a filthy casual. Wait, there's non-painted <laughs> minis? <laughs> yeah, they're all over my house. Trust me. Say, you know all about, I've heard about the basement, Kathy. Okay. Oh, oh my god, just Have look at right, my hobbies? If you could see right next to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. Show us. Show us. No, I'm not taking the phone off its or the uh, I'm not taking the camera off its perch. That's probably a good call. Phone too, huh? No, I actually have an actual camera. Oh fine. 
Um, but, uh, oh yeah, I've got. Oh, this just came in the mail today. What um, is that? Blue tech. Woo! God, I love uh, that stuff. It's uh, it's because since I put eyes on this guy. Oh, you don't um, want to. I cannot. I cannot now use uh, it as blue tack because that's how it works in our house. Anytime something ends up with a face, it's here for life. Look, I got some here right off my hobbit table. No, Keep but it I was on the gonna corner. say I have like screw, just like you know the mess. Bags of stuff. Oh I I cleaned my hobby desk off a couple nights ago, so Blisters mine's much of... cleaner. Oh, this is in a drawer. Oh old plastic blood bowl. Hey Jeez, the gorgeous my, model. My, Dan? Mine's in a case. What's up? Yeah, um you said you got new stuff coming up that you're gonna be working on. Uh, what's your newest stuff that you got coming up pretty soon? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the next project I'm working on uh, is a set of Necromunda, narr Necromunda slash Admech uh, narrative 40k terrain. And so basically what I started doing is I, you know, I try to establish... I've been trying to work on kits for a while. I'm like, you know, I'm having a hard time sinking my teeth into this stuff. And so I started like working on little... Not super involved, not like Grand Chronicles, just like, you just go on this set. And working on stuff with a little bit of point to it instead of just like, this is my generic 40k city, or this is my generic fantasy village, this is a dungeon. I mean, this is a dungeon. But like, beyond <laughs> this, I'm going to start working on, you know. Here's my generic sci fi, can be used for Infinity, can be used for Necromunda, can be used for 40k, etc. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, if you try and come at all those things at once, you're, you're going to lose something. Each one of those things that cut off part of the cool part of the, of, some of the others so i've tried to you know i could just draw all day so i've started doing more stuff a little more thematically so the next set is uh, it plays into necromunda and admech and necrons and tyranids and chaos uh and it's basically the story of the the world is that uh a hive world got bombarded by adamantine uh or asteroid to adamantine and suddenly uh that that just mechanicus decides oh we need to take over this world for the emperor. For the emperor. <laughs> right, and, so, and like, man, it sounds like actually a really cool narrative of like, kind of this, uh, you know, this overarching mechanicus trying to secure this place. Meanwhile, there's like this whole other gang war narrative going on, plus chaos cults and and turned stuff and sleeping necrons, and so you know they're playing off of yes, playing off of games workshop releases, but also like. That sounds fun. Like, I want to play those games. Yeah. So, um, that and I have most of the math worked out and none of the skins. So, that's going to be a big part of that. Um, Age of Sigmar, death stuff coming out. Uh, dungeon stuff. Um, Gaslands, Shadespire, and Legion stuff coming out. Um, what again, too many games. What do you? Because I know a lot of people are really interested in Star Wars Legion stuff. Because uh, there was a couple of people that were talking about doing uh, 3D printing of it, and I was like, I'm gonna wait to see what I can, you know, get from my boy Dan. Uh, what do you plan on doing for the Star Wars Legion stuff? Because that's I'm really looking forward to that because I it really John is right. It needs a lot of good terrain and not just thrown out terrain. Yeah, the right kind of terrain. Yeah. So I actually did a bunch of research about this. Um, leading up to Nepticon, so I had an idea of what to talk to people about. And so I watched the, the original trilogy, and then I went to Beasts of War and Bell of Lost Souls a bunch, and watched a bunch of bat raps, and then I went back and watched uh, Rogue One um, Episode 7, I forgot its fucking name. Force Awakens? Force yeah. Awakens. Force Awakens, and then the, the original uh, trilogy again, there's all three. And uh, I found that what's really nice about the game, and this is like, speaks to their artistry, is that the game plays a lot like the movies, which is often, you know, two forces vying for kind of frame the battlefield and then kind of pew pewing over over cover until somebody brings in some heavy support or Darth Vader decides to fuck you all or <laughs> Because true. he does. Yes. If you talk yeah, no, he's, he does. Yes, he the, does. One of the bad he walked up and killed Luke and the little walker thing and then went through and murdered the rest of the folks. So oh. God, this guy's so crazy. But you know, so the game reflects the movies very well because you know they sh set that that shooting corridor, or or two, and then someone brings in the heavy weapons or the you know the ploy, and so 
basically the stuff that I'm working on is uh, a couple of sets of bigger, bigger area soaking terrain. So you can start framing what those corridors can possibly be. And then smaller scale stuff to fill that corridor, make it interesting and also survivable. Cause you said earlier that you, you oh. can't play this on a 40 K table. That's fucking true. You absolutely cannot. You need to have little bits and pieces everywhere. Boy. Rebel troopers Cause... cannot hang out in the open. This is just in. Yeah. No. Lasers. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Um, yeah. Why uh, thanks for defense? Are oh, shit <laughs> for everything really? That's not. I wouldn't white dice anything. So the, but yeah. So the, the legion stuff I'm working on is going to be again. I mentioned earlier that core technica, technica set. That's going to be, you know, the kind of stuff where if you paint up like clean silver and white, you can stick it into an imperial facility. Or if you do it like all like you know, dark tans and brass, you could put it on Tatooine. Or if you want to do it. You know that that gunmetal steel with some oil and moss it goes on Endor. Um, so that's going to be the starting. And that's going to be kind of a kind of a starter set of terrain. Uh, I want to keep it affordable, but not like not cheap. Just like I'm going to commit to this, and this is something I'm going to use in most of my games. Um, so it's going to be fun. And after that, I'll probably just watch the movies again because I can best research ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I. I didn't post about this before at Epicon, but like one Saturday when I watched all three Aliens movies and then, I don't know, all three, and then uh, all three Star Wars movies and then did it again. <laughs> I'm like, I'm working on a Saturday. I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so probably still watch them again and, and think about what I want to, which part just, you know, push my buttons for me. I do. You have I have some, uh, I'm sorry. Are you going to have some uh, biomechanical kind of uh, terrain and stuff based on uh, aliens at all in the future? Oh, like some, some Geiger business? Yeah. Um, you know, I have had... Yes is the answer. Because um, I was looking at that, the, your objective markers, and I could see that, that you would be able to pull something like that off as I look at things like the Chaos Portal and, and some it, of that stuff. Yeah, I've uh, I played with those a bunch, so I've, um, yeah, watching, especially Alien Covenant and uh, and the ones, the latest movies where they're running around the, the, um, <sighs> screw you, Mango stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when they're in the in the, the space jockey spaceships uh, a bit more, you know, the I'm able to pick apart what things I could do there. And yeah, I have some cool stuff coming out. Again, uh, re release schedule wise, I've got to do the Gary 40K Legion and uh, Gaslands, which is a crazy big, very small game. Uh, an amazing Gaslands is an amazing I've been game. seeing a lot of people posting their car modification, their like Hot Wheels modifications yeah. for that. Some yes. really cool stuff. Um, so Louisville wants to know. Go for it, oh, yeah. Uh, so Louisville pitch. Uh... Three or five wants to know how many pieces you think in your core set for uh, for Legion. Uh, probably one or two medium large pieces, um, three to five medium pieces, and then six or eight smallish stuff. Because you know the core set comes with boxes and and barricades, so I don't want to do too much overlap with that stuff because it is gorgeous. Yeah, it is um, very cool. But uh, one can never have too many boxes. <laughs> One can yeah. never have too many boxes or barricades. I, I play Infinity. You are absolutely toot and correct. That, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> I uh, Yesterday when we were at the con, I got too caught up. I was catching up with people, having friends, you know, talking and stuff. And I went and walked around the vendor hall, and I was like, oh, the next round's about to start. And so I ran back and totally forgot about it. But this guy had opened up like five or six core sets and was selling uh, the barricades in it was it like six barricades in there for 10 bucks holy that's, shit and i that's went not bad at all no i was like six barricades for 10 bucks and he had like four of them and i was like i need to come back and get those and then they just tournament just kept on and i was like dang it totally forgot about it it was like, so more like eight in minutes yeah i mean it was, it was it was worth it for 10 bucks they were definitely worth it um it is now pretty much uh actually we're running a little bit behind uh, media section. Before we go to the media section, let's go and give away these two dials. Everybody give me hashtag uh, mango. Uh, everybody hashtag mango, and we will see who can get this. 
And we'll give you a few Hashtag minutes. Hashtag mango. So bad. Jesus. <laughs> oh, the mango with you one's not good? Welcome back to the 1980s. Oh, uh, do we uh, have some Zima and mango that we can ooh, do? Zima, Zima is mango. so bad. Zima is like grappa soda. <laughs> like I had to, like, oh, it would be nice. I figured it, it would be like uh, Mike's hard something. No, it's it tastes like Mike's secret. hard something. <laughs> Mike's like hard Mike's something. Soft something. <laughs> Mike's they, vomit covered something. Didn't they have Zima like signs all through Babylon Five, which I thought was fucking hilarious? Probably. I think that's true. Well, All right, we're going to take I, a little I bit more. Here we're going to be hashtag mango or just say something real quick, and we will do this in a minute. Last so at upset. 10, 9, 8. Yeah, 10, yeah, actually 10. 10. Jesus, it's going to be like going home for a while. <laughs> All right, we're going to roll it. And our winner is Crimson 1919. You have won it. Ah, uh, Webby. Just... Hooray! Um. Didn't make 19, the, 19. The we have one more giveaway. Yeah. It's alright, Mango uh, Webby was still in there. Uh, it's based on how much people chat, and I have it set to a pretty large distance, but in case someone's just watching. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything. Uh, Webby, make sure you send me your uh, web address. Or your web address. Ah, Crimson, that's not going to get you. Crimson, your, right? <laughs> or no, Crimson1919. Um. Go ahead and send me your uh, physical address, and I will send you both of these dials. Uh, and right before the end of the show, I will send these off to somebody after I finish them, guys. I'm not done with them yet. It's going to take a little while because it's got to let this stuff set, put more in, let it set, put more stuff in. And I've also got um, some other things I'm going to do with them, and we'll give those away at the very end. So right now, Crimson 1919 and was it Centerville? What you said? Centervale, yes. Centervale, Centervale. yeah. Was the other winner. Um, make sure you either find us on Facebook or send me a whisper here in chat. Or uh, on Twitch. Send me it and I'll pass it along. Yeah, whoever, however, however he wants it get, gets to him. Uh, and at the very end, before we leave, I will uh, get these ready to be sent out. Um, and that, let's go to media section. Is there, see if it's going to work. Hey, media who, section. Who's, who, who's the sponsor of the media section? I don't know. It's this guy. I We've do, never seen I him do. before. Who, who is it? Tonic Craft Studio. Yay! Yay. Hey. Um, I got you're gonna get squishy heads. Squishy Tech heads! TectonicCraftStudios.com. It's true. One craft, many studios. Also, totally wrong. <laughs> many very squishy head. I feel like my head is this thin. It's crushing uh, your head. Crushing your head. Crushing your head. Oh. Crushing your head. So, that's oh, still good. Headache. I have things to show and talk about. Oh, so you have shows? What? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you my wood, guys. Though it's showing you his wood, guys. Oh, for fuck's sake! Oh, my wood. How much is my wood? Savages. Nice. All right. So here, here's a four x four, and um, I put one long wall along the back area here, and two half walls in this corner here. And what's nice is that this allows you to have a kind of Diablo 2-esque um, axis of view. Because people, when I first did this, I made them full height walls. And I realized that on a tabletop, we're like trying to look at stuff, you know, and we just really couldn't see it at all. So uh, we kind of like ate away the bricks a little bit. So it can either be ruined or just like x-ray view. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so what's nice about this is I glued them to each other, but not to the bottom so that Trophies, of course. Oh, I can stay there for now. Um, so yeah, this is nice. this is that piece stored uh, four and a half inches squared. Um, and the, what else is nice is I'm gonna try to see if my laptop can capture this. Is that the pieces um, are made to um, notch together? So it'll have nice, nice clean corners everywhere in the piece. Oh shit! That's the inside. The outside. Yeah, because it turns out mechanical connections are pretty great, and also reversible versus chemical ones, glue, which is not. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all the dungeons gonna be like that. And so, what else is cool is that, so this wall is made of kind of four by four by X or four by Y. Well, so anything that is is four wide. This will work on, and other other walls will tile into that. Um, 
And so once probably late this next coming week, I'm gonna start basically uh that's gonna be semi semi monthly or bi monthly. Um like uh stream not stream, because this is a stream. <laughs> Just like uh waves of releases and man, 151 sucks by the way. Um <laughs> nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. Um <laughs> Um, but just like uh, a steady stream of, of updated stuff, so season needs bigger rooms, some different different aesthetics, different walls, and uh, I'll be selling the walls in in bundles of like full walls, broken walls, doorways. That way, you don't need to like fish through you know wall one through twelve to see what you need. Just oh, th- these are the ones that are all half walls. These are all like rubble. These are all these are broken bricks. Um, and then. After, so after that gets fleshed out, then we'll start doing other finishes. So we'll have like, you know, mosaics or you know, smaller bricks or wood or I don't know, all kinds of other stuff. And oh, I did want to mention that this game. I started doing this, like the the very first spark for this was for a game called Relic Blade, oh, yeah. which has had a couple of cool uh, Kickstarters. I think they're at three or four at this point. Um, it's a wonderful game of it's a narrative fantasy skirmish um, that basically you control a whole DD party instead of hoping your fuck, fuckwad friends don't ruin everything for you. <laughs> it's, competitive. So it's either you know you control a whole band of monsters trying to overcome these adventurers or you're, you're adventurers fighting other adventurers. And so you get to build the synergies you want. And it's very, very simple, very, very clean mechanics. It's not like... You know, Huck D6 is, it's, uh, there's some nice math in it, and the art style is very uh, unique, but um, familiar. But it's great. Absolutely worth checking out. One of the thousand games I'm checking out right now, in addition to Shade Spire, Legion, Gaslands, and Relic Blade. Uh, it's a really fun, um, closer to Tolkien feel of old timey fantasy versus some of the other steampunk or high fantasy stuff that's out now. Do they actually have a gnome riding a fox? Because that picture is cool. He's got a bomb. <laughs> Relic Blade? Yeah. Maybe? Which which picture? Show us that. It's on their... Good lord. Uh, on their factions uh, page. I just jumped on there, got to the factions, and like halfway or part way down under the adventurers, there's a gnome riding a fox with a bomb. It's pretty cool. Maybe this is... One so might like, say he's... The bomb. The bomb. Oh, speaking of my, speaking of my nineties. Um, so yeah, here's the book. Um, this guy's eating a sandwich, by the way. Worth looking at. Yeah, sandwich right here. Boop. Well, that's played. To... Super fun game. Um, the box actually... looks pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Oh yeah. And the model really looks pretty solid. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Nice game. Um, and Sean's a super cool guy. And yeah, they use a lot of the dungeon, you know, uh, modular dungeon aesthetic. And so I looked at his stuff and I said, hey, we should work on this together. And so here we are. That's awesome. Boom. I'm looking at the uh, the eel sorcerer right now. <laughs> eel sorcerer, yeah. Oh. Kind of making me hungry. For yeah, eel? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, mm. let's let's talk about some movies. Gonzo, I, oh, man. I, I watched a great addition to a uh, to an uh, to a long-standing series, and then another movie this week. Okay, well, let's let our guest go first. You need to describe our new rating system to him. <laughs> so, Dan, our, we're not doing shots of Kraken anymore. We we've we've evolved. Now we're doing space herpes. It's the same thing. Less space herpes is good, just like Shots of Kraken. And still a scale of five, but it's how many space herpes the movies has. <laughs> I think silence is the proper response. <laughs> Why did you guys give up drinking? <laughs> For space herpes? Because you haven't in seen Ice Pirates. Of... So, if you come down again and you're in the area, maybe I'll bring space, bring over uh, Ice Pirates so you can learn I about don't space want... No, no, no. I don't want space. No, no, fuck that. 
Anyways, I have two movies. So Space Herpes is our new our, our new rating system. So a one, a zero means it's really really awesome. One means it's just okay. You know, two go on and so forth. But you get to five. That's like the worst type of movie in the world. They're really hard to get rid of. <laughs> they, they are. They are. <laughs> So, Dan, what's your first selection you want to talk about this week? Moana. Okay, okay. go oh, for it. Cool. Give us your uh, review of Moana. Moana is a super good movie. Moana is better than most grown-up movies I've seen recently uh, in terms of storytelling and character evolution, uh, despite being a Disney movie about definitely not a princess. Um, but it was really awesome. The songs are great. The rock is in it. Uh, they hired an actual like teenage Hawaiian princess to like play the part and you can tell that she's for, like you tell that she's a a youth the whole time it's not weird um and it's fun it's, it's a good movie it's fun uh there's like a powerful message at the end it's got alan you know, Tudyk as the chicken the favorite part of that is that they auditioned those motherfuckers yes the screen. like that audition was just that scream i know so, there's a clip of him going i went fun. to juilliard um, oh. So that's zero Kraken, but the real movie I want to talk about is The Void. The Void, uh, huh? The Void is a uh, horror movie on Netflix, and it is the goddamn business. It is there, are, it, so it evokes a lot of uh, classic tropes, but doesn't play play them out uh, the way we've seen. Uh, it's a I don't give too much about it away about it because it's such a a great movie. It doesn't feel it's cinematic without being overly done, mm-hmm. um, and it's believable without being while still being a performance piece. And it's actually scary, but not with jump scares. Like the feeling of oh. dread. So is actual scary. Actual oh, scary. Oh, see, that's like, what I like. Like a psychological it's, scary. It's so like remember, like when I was scared of that movie, I just went. Oh, oh no! And it's like I was still like rictus adrenaline, like worried. I was just like crush shaking, like debilitating dread and horror. And it was like this is good. I watched it twice in the same day. I watched it and then went to bed and woke up and like Kelly watched a movie. <laughs> it's got knives in it too. Hmm. Yes. Yes. It does. <laughs> I like knives. <laughs> That's not the knives I'm talking about. Knives from Scott Pilgrim. Mm-hmm. So how many shots of Krakens would you give this movie? Or not shots of Krakens, uh, Space Herpes would you give? I don't remove Space Herpes. This movie removes Space Herpes from the galaxy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this movie restored my faith in, in horror movies ever. Oh, like, shit. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, this can happen. So it's like one shot of penicillin? <laughs> I don't think Penicillin does anything to Space Herpes, dude. Nope. No, this is, no, no, this is, this is uh, one slice of greasy buffalo chicken pizza at 3 a.m. on Friday. <laughs> this is Canadian. It is Canadian. Wow, nice. It's a light horror. I love it. I'm looking at it, and all I saw was hooded cultists and Canadian. I'm there. I'm totally watching this, and it's on Netflix, you say? Mm-hmm. I watched it oh, five yeah. times. Oh yeah. It's real good. That's going on my list. That was too. That was a lot of talk about a movie, but seriously, it's a super good movie. Like, it ruined it. Like ruined the rest of rest of Netflix for me. I'm like, oh, what else? Is this. Right. Of, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, Chucky. No, not. No. <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> oh. oh. Kathy, what did you watch this week? I started uh, the second season of Santa Clarita Diet. We we got about four episodes in. We decided we should savor it a little bit. So, well, plus we had a convention this weekend. So, you know, we were busy. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed the first season. It continues to be surprisingly unpredictable. Like, Good. as soon as you think, they're obviously going to take this direction. No, they don't. They turn the other way. So I've I've been enjoying it a lot, and it's just so funny, so fucking funny. 
I've heard all those things. I heard it's really funny and it's very believable. Um, which is the things I appreciate nowadays. So. Fucking funny. Sorry. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's all I've done this this week. That's all I watched. I didn't watch much. Fair enough. Um, um, before we get into our big review, John, I'll give my uh, small review. Sure. I'm about halfway through. I was a little bit halfway through on uh, Before We Are Hanged, the uh, First Law Trilogy. And I was driving and listening to it. And uh, I've actually started to really love it now because you've got the core party members and they're mm -hmm. doing they're 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 working as a team and they're acting as a team and they're hating each other as a team and loving each other as a team. And mm -hmm. it now feels like a really good fantasy story. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. something bad happens to them. Yeah, they they just. People still keep their attitude. People keep still who they are. Um, mm -hmm. it, I really, really like the characters now. Uh, it took a while to get to know them, but they're really, really good. Um, yeah, they're deep. They're, they're also they're... assholes. <laughs> yes, well, and I yeah, love well, that. It's, it's the Inquisitor that's like my favorite character. <clears throat> he has so much depth. Wait. Um, everybody's okay. just been really yeah, good. He... Go ahead my favorite series i recommend it to everybody like i absolutely love this i recommended it to gonzo <laughs> yeah and so i've been listening to it because i mean i for me to go to my game store i have to drive you know an hour so i listen to it on the way and oh the first book was okay it was good uh the yeah. second book i'm about a little over halfway through it and where the party is all together and doing things and i'm like you know bad shit's happening things are going and you know the story's getting more depth to it and i'm like yeah this was good and there was a I, not to spoil anything, but there's some really good, there's some really good scenes where bad things happen to them, uh, and they start talking. You get to start knowing the characters more outside of just the small bits you've learned so far, and you laugh and crack at it, but some of the shit they say and do, but yeah. you're like, yeah, that's a D and D party, you know, that, that's what you also, expect. Also, people like those are the first, like those characters are, are so believable, like they could mm -hmm. be my friend. Like, I could talk about. Uh, Bloody Nine or Black Dow, I'm like, oh yeah, that asshole. I'm like, that's, I mean, that person's made up. Yes. They're not real. But at the same time, it's like, they're so compelling and so interesting. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. And all this stuff, too, it's, it's all been good. He's on, he has six books in that, in that universe, and then another trilogy, and then a collection of short stories, and he's working on a second trilogy to follow, and it's like, I am out of my mind excited. Like, it's compartmentalized. It's put away. I can't even. Yeah, I really like his writing. That's Joe Abercrombie that we're talking about. Yeah, it's been you? really good. I really like uh, what he's what he's doing. Um, I like the way it, the characters are. Everything so far has been really really good. Um, definitely worth it. Amazing. Yes, he's so got some really good stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, he used to be a freelance screenwriter, so he'd have to like write out what combat scenes it need to look like on TV shows and movies. Mm -hmm. So like, and, and that totally shows through in all of it. It's like, yes. Very, very descriptive. Also, have you gotten to the first book has the seven page combat scene. It's like the fastest seven pages I've ever read. In my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Real page turner. Yeah. I guess it's, I, I'm only listening to it. Cause I, I do a lot of driving, a lot of moving and all over the place. And, you know, sometimes I'll listen to it while I'm streaming and uh, before this week because everybody likes the music selection I've been choosing. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is, it's a really good series. I'm really happy that Kathy recommended it. Um, it's not as dark as people were telling me it was, but I'm, I, I'm used to that nowadays. I'm used to like, this isn't dark. I remember the Red Wedding. This is nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, this is, this is what I would expect from a, a, a series. So... Um, so right now, uh, zero Kraken, uh, zero space herpes. It's going to take me a while to get out of, that, out of my head. Um, <laughs> first book I would give probably like maybe one or two just because it's a lot of building, but still a good series. So you ready to talk about the big one, John? Well, I got one other one to talk about. Okay, first. go with that like one. Said, go to the big saw, one. I, I saw a movie I, and then I also saw a, a great addition to a long standing franchise. Okay. The great addition to a long standing franchise would be called Rogue One. I watched that on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, view number, I don't even know, eight is still awesome. <laughs> um, 
I actually find like that, that Bodhi is growing on me because he's just trying a guy trying to get riped by himself and he does and he is brave as fuck doing it. He doesn't seem like the kind to be brave, but he is he's great. I mean, he's just doing his thing. That's all great. It is it hits on all cylinders. I mean, yes. I think I was a little cr- critical of it earlier, and just rewatching, it's great rewatchability, even mm-hmm. knowing what's coming. I mean, it's it's got the appropriate ending, but it isn't like a fucking downer. Correct. You you nice. you're like, and I think that if they would have cut off the movie right where it was supposed to end, where everybody you know pretty much is dead, it would have had a different feel to it. But when they continue on with it, that last bit. Mm-hmm. That just makes the movie a billion times better. Yeah, I mean, ending and no matter what they did, I, I, I'm in the minority that I feel like the two Darth Vader scenes are unnecessary to the movie on a whole. Correct. They don't need to be there, but when they added the first one, adding the second one to also where he's in the hallway killing everyone is awesome. Yep. If they just had one or the other, I felt like it wouldn't have been right. But adding them both, good. And then ending with Princess Leia was like, it brings you back up. Yeah. No matter what it is. It, brings you back up which is great but i'll tell you i could always go for some gratuitous darth vader oh. I, I can but like i mean like just the hallway scene would have been like what are you doing come on but they they established vader's in this movie earlier with the scene that i think was less necessary and they bring him back i'm like okay that was perfect yes that, that was good mm-hmm. it was necessary but you added it in the right thing good job um i would love to see like or hear or read about a director's cut, you know, because there's lots of scenes where they were like had the plans or running on the beach. I would like to see what the original ending was supposed to be, or at well, least I have an idea because uh, that'd be be cool just to see. Well, I know they did say that they when they did their first initial screen that a lot of people said it was too dark and too much of a downer, so they had to cut out a lot of stuff and reshoot some stuff because it was just it was too dark to be a Star Wars movie. And I was like, yeah. I want to see that cut. I don't. I would like to see that cut once. I, I'm glad it's not the actual cut because I think. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about this later. No spoilers. But <laughs> uh, I would like to see it because I think it would be interesting to see that version. Yeah, absolutely. I think well, it would be great to see it. It's it's a great movie. Um, I love what it added to the Star Wars universe. It. Ground combat's cool. The space combat's cool. Uh, it is one of the best Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. Do we have to wait five years before we can uh, spoil an ending for a movie? No. No? Why? I'm just asking. No, Rogue One, no. The ending of this Rogue One is fair game now. It is more than a year old. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that's more than a year old, unless someone specifically says, hey, I haven't watched that yet, it's fair game. Anything that I've already seen twice. I will not ever spoil the ending of The Usual Suspects. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. But yeah, so right. I, zero, zero space herpes. They don't have space herpes in that movie. Nope. Uh, K2SO killed them all. <laughs> all right, let's go with the big one. I'll let you go the first. The big one, uh, Dan. Um, so, first thing I'm going to say, it is good. You should go see it. Yes. That being said, I'm going to be critical as fuck without spoiling this movie. <laughs> but in addition to that, I will say you cannot in a million lifetimes, fairly judge this movie until the second part comes out. I'll agree with you on that. You just can't. There's no way. It is going to be one of those, you have to judge them collectively. And you got about a year to wait for that, so get ready to... Lots of people uh, judging stuff before they really should. But that's what we do. Um, uh, I think Xander actually said that apparently it's getting killed on Metacritic. Yeah, like uh, 64, which is not a terrible Metacritic. It's 80 something on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like that's probably much closer to uh, to fair. Yeah. Um, I will say my biggest problem with the movie looking at it is there is a shit ton of stuff in this movie that should have been done in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. There are too much Guardians of the Galaxy in an Avengers movie. They really because the way they work, they take over scenes they're in. They should have had a Guardians three, which had a lot. Could have started off the backstory with Thanos, a little more backstory, a little more of the Gamora Thanos, and could have done a ton of stuff there, and then meet up for Infinity War. And I think that would have made it a much better movie because a lot of that stuff, while it's good, I mean the Thanos building, Thanos is the best Marvel villain. Like, sorry Loki, you're good, but yeah. Thanos, what they did in this movie, he 
absolutely they, they did good stuff with him. He is a good, believable, understandable villain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If starting off a tad too powerful, but that's sort of the whole point of him. But I feel like a lot of some of the things they did, you're like, that feels really shoehorned. I know you're trying to do a lot in one movie, but come on, guys. And again, remember, I like the movie. You should go see it. I'm just being critical. Uh, I feel I, like I, that, that's the biggest problem. Uh, looking back on it and thinking about it and stuff, uh, I'll, I'll give it a great movie. Uh, one of the best Marvel movies I've seen. Um, it doesn't make my top. It doesn't make great for me. It's I can easily name five movies better. Okay, see, it makes it great for me. Um, I really liked it a lot. I can get what you're saying that some of the stuff should have been done in uh, Garden of the Galaxy 3 because it just fits. There's things that you're like, okay, this happened? Okay, I got it where it happened, but why wouldn't... This would have been perfect for Guardians. Yeah, I mean, there there are scenes where there's no... There's just the Guardians doing stuff. Mm-hmm. There is no reason, or just the Guardians and maybe one other person. That could have been easily done in a Guardians 3, giving you better setup. It would have made it a lot better overall. Yeah. I think. Right. Are you um, like, no, just a bit. I, I was going to say that I, I really liked it. There wasn't any horrible scenes for me. Oh, there, God, were, no. there was definitely a, a, amazing I'm, fight scenes. Uh, you feel critical. for a lot of characters. Yeah, you're being, yeah, you're being critical. Um, yeah. I... I I know that what was interesting was seeing other people's reactions at the end of the oh. movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, because some people were pissed. They should be. That was a shit ending. Well, I don't like, think it was no, a shit like ending. Of all the missteps Marvel made, that ending is a fucking shit. See, that I, drops the movie in an entire category for me because you can't end a movie like that. Oh, you cannot see. learn from the desolation of Smog. You cannot fucking end a movie like that. It's not done. <laughs> because you're just you're leaving the audience on a downer. It's going to make everyone feel worse. I, I think if they would have little... told people, yeah, ha, 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 maximum. I was thinking the same thing. Oh, careful, yeah, guys. Careful. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're not <laughs> saying it, anything. but what I'm thinking is what they should have <laughs> done is done Guardians of the Galaxy or done Avengers you know, Infinity Gauntlet Part One in the title. That way, yeah, people. Yeah, they should have kept it Infinity War Part One, Part Two, so everyone knows that it's better. Yeah. Because um, they already said it, they were going to do that. It was going to be a two part. They just didn't. It, some people didn't know that. And again, I'm being critical. Like that doesn't. It doesn't make the movie bad. It's nowhere near bad. No. It's still in the top half of Marvel movies easily. Yeah. It's just not, in my opinion, in the top five or so. I, I like I said, I could easily name five movies I feel are better. Um. There totally could have been. Uh, they they could have ran it better. I feel like. I'm not going to blame the directors. I'm not going to blame the screenwriters. They're in a bad position. And probably the hardest thing is the hype for this movie is so high, it is almost impossible for a movie to live up this this magnitude of hype. You just can't. Mm. It's not fair to a movie to expect to live up that hype. Yeah. I loved it. I didn't have hardly any problems with it. Oh, I, mean, I didn't leave the movie pissed or anything. I was like, oh, yeah, it was good. That's great, great scenes. Uh, I will watch it again. I'm sure my mom wants to see it. We'll see it at cheap theater. I may even see it again in the regular theater. You know, it's, yeah. it's not going to stop me. They, uh, they also feel they made some missteps, but... And again, guys, I'm not going to spoil anything. There are things they did that if you step back and think of it, you're like, oh, I see why they did it this way because of what what they're planning. And it's going to be great. And there is definitely wait at the end of the credits. That is a little more uplifting. I think if they had that at the end of the... Uh, actual movie that would have been better it would have uplifted there rather than waiting through the credits and then like oh there's your thing thanks yeah <laughs> uh to answer maximum dt yes there are a couple of marvel movies coming out in between um uh and the loss yeah and there's Amen a couple the and and you have to watch the trailers or know what they are um because they actually some of them actually tie into this so you'll just have to wait and see I think Ant-Man and the Wasp is the only one that is theoretically happening. Uh, what's the best way of putting it? Between them in in chronologically, because Captain Marvel's coming out between, but I'm pretty sure Captain Marvel is a period piece set in the 80s. I believe so. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Uh, uh, and, and it may actually happen. Ant-Man and the Wasp happens concurrently or before they reference them in the movie. Yeah. And but. There you go. So, I mean, it is a good movie. You should go see it. Don't let, you know, me trying to be critical because I, I watch a movie, and this is why I love watching movies twice. 
I was wishing my mom wants to see it or something because the first time I watch a movie, I cannot help but be critical. I just I just can't get out of that mindset right now. Um, you know, it was like the last Jedi. I watched the first time, I was very critical of it. But you go back and watch the second time, you can just get into it. You no longer have expectations or whatever. You can sit back and just just bask in the fact that you have all these guys in there. There is only one person I can think of that did not come back to reprise their role, and I'll give that guy a pass. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you who it is because that's a spoiler, but there's one person who didn't show up, and it is a pass. That's fine. But, man, very very great action. I mean, it's top-notch. You can all argue by being critical. I mean, Dan, do you have some stuff you want to add about it? Uh, I thought the movie was insanely uh, rich. I thought that... So the ending was the ending. I thought... I was about 25 minutes into the movie. And I was like, oh, shit. So much stuff has happened so far. I bet we're almost over. Oh, no. We're nope. only 25 <laughs> minutes into this. Buckle the fuck up. Um, and it really does... Uh, it really is jam-packed full of content. The entire, oh. the entire show. There's no filler. There's a, a ton of one-liners, which were amazing and really added a lot of value to seeing the other movies. And they weren't like uh, out of place. They weren't like out of place one liners. They were right. good. They were well yes. placed. Yeah. A lot of singers. I stopped. I, I was like, oh, I remember that one. Or that one. Oh, that one's good. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to see it again. I'm going to shit. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was great. Um, I'm definitely seeing yeah. it again. I would see it again. I would not give it any. Well, no space herpes? No space herpes. I couldn't. I don't have. Any space herpes to give? I don't have any Kraken. I'll give it. I give it no 151. This <laughs> <laughs> is zero 151. Because fuck that stuff. But no, great movie. Uh, I would go see it. I would still be wary if you want spoiler free. If you want to see it spoiler free, I'd say get on that sooner than later because Friday morning the first item on my feed was a spoiler. I was like. Jeez, nobody was wasting any time with that. No. Yeah, so the podcaster had to uh, ban two people from his page because the one guy spoiled it for the other, and the other guy bitched about it, adding the spoiler back in like a dumbass. So he like banned oh, the both, which is fair. I saw that. Because hashtag Thanos demands silence. Um, okay, guys, we are actually coming where we're going over a little bit over today. I know we had a lot of uh, problems oh. with our feed. Oh, Gonzo, get your uh, what's your what's your what's your uh, rating of it? Uh, writing, uh, I give I give it one space herpes because I want to see the whole complete series to make it in, so that would be mine. Uh, I also give it one space herpes with uh, asterisks of I will totally revisit when the second one comes out. I think I, I'm pretty certain that rating will become better after that. Uh, probably. But right now, you know, it's it's like a thing. It's got a mountain of little nitpicks, but it's a mountain of nitpicks you can't really ignore. But overall, you got to see it. You're going to see it multiple times. It's great. The action's great. And there is one person in the movie who screws everything up, and we know who that is. And that guy is me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, spoiler: Gonzo screws everything up. Yep. Damn it, Gonzo. Um, guys, we'll let you know that I will be doing some streaming this week. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, because we're not doing our uh, Force and Destiny feed. We're going to put on an every other week type thing. Uh, so I'll be doing some more painting, and we're probably working on some Star Wars Legion stuff. Uh, but Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, no Saturday. Oh, no, no Friday and no Saturday stream. Uh, but definitely Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll be doing giveaways there. But we are doing donations to get to that giveaway. I did forget to give away something on the last one. So on Tuesday, uh, I will be giving away the uh, Creature Caster dial for free uh, to anybody. But we will set up a donation, and if we make our first donation, I will give away the Ogren Bacor. Uh, if we make it to the second donation, I will give away a box of press gangers, since they no longer exist. And <laughs> if we make it to the third donation, I will give away an extreme behemoth uh, on air. But we do have to get to the donations because we do have to defer some costs. And this is just an easy way for y'all to get some free prize. If you would like to get into the drawing for these bases before we hit off air, um, you can. Make sure you type in the hashtag bases, B-A-S-E-S, 
and we will give you a little bit because we're going to give those away. I still have to work on them, so you just have to wait a bit. You're not eligible, John. No, no, I'm just making sure. You don't know need to <laughs> wait until you're done painting them to give them away, do you? Yes. The, ba you the bases. I'm not talking about the miniatures. Good. The miniatures are going to give away un unpainted and everything. The bases, you've got to wait because I'm not done putting them, not finished with them. Because I'm going to fully put them up. So if you would like to be eligible for the bases, do hashtag bases and we will see who gets it. Uh, Dan, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see you next. Am I seeing uh -huh. you at MomCon? Uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to go and then I was that the place I was going to, and I'm not going to, so I'm not sure. But also, my car is dying, so probably not. Oh. What? Car dying, no boy now. You I mean, gotta if, go. That's if, like the time I get to see you. If you want to give me a car, Gonzo, I'll, I'll take a car. No. <laughs> you want to fly, and I'll just pick you up from something. <laughs> You're buying plane tickets? Is that no? Anything? Sure. No, you said you'd buy the plane ticket. <laughs> I didn't say that once. Uh, All right, guys, uh, let's go ahead and roll for it and see who's got it. And the person, let's see. Rolling the Roll dice. Armored Wolf. Armored Wolf. Armored Wolf again. <laughs> yeah, I owe, Armor, I owe Armored Wolf uh, a prize for being our 100th subscriber, so oh. he will get that. Uh, I'll just add it in there. I haven't had a chance to send it yet, so I will include it. Uh, so, Armored Wolf, give me a little bit. I'll send you uh, an email or something. When um, I get these finished, because uh, I definitely want to take pictures of them and put them on our Facebook page, uh, I gotta let the resin or let the water sit, add some grass to it, kind of, and add some water effects, and then I'll send it out to you. So just give me a bit on that. Oh. Um, other than that, guys, uh, we appreciate you coming on, and especially going through our growing pains as we're learning Twitch stuff and trying to get things done. Yeah, we could. The done. stuff looks cool though. Having Aww. all the, the bells and whistles is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to Armored Wolf has been timed out for five seconds because of spamming <laughs> symbols automated by Nightbot. Nightbot yeah. is Nightbot. really mean. Yeah, Nightbot I'm gonna... is really mean. Nightbot strict. don't play. No, Nightbot don't play at all. Um... <laughs> it's an automated bot to keep spam and stuff out. It, yeah, what it is is it, it. So some people don't, you know, spam horrible things or type horrible things in there. So we're trying to make sure. In case we get a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, oh. Nightbot is mean. Um, guys, like I said, I'll be doing some more streaming this week. Definitely Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, like I said, if we make those donations, I'll give that stuff away. Uh, they're not huge amounts, but just help us defer the cost. And also shipping. Because um, shipping can be a pain in the buttocks we learned. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. So, uh, other than that, um, Dan, we can't wait to see what you're going to do for us. Uh, do uh, stuff-wise. Um I definitely can't wait to see your Star Wars stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good week. With that, guys, we are out. We out. Woo! See you, nerds. Are we done now? We're not done yet. We have our after credits. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, so we're just going to like talk through the... Uh... Why did somebody on the chat that I didn't even see was on the chat until we were all done? G-R-V-E-N-I-69. Yeah. Hey, Graven, we see you on there. Also, guys, don't forget, hit follow. It helps us out. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you're eligible for one Twitch stream for free. Make sure you click that up there. We love our subscribers. We also love our followers. We love lots of people. We love yeah, a lot of things. A little indiscriminate. We also love my wood. <laughs>